Every time he see me, he said, Faze, I remember, man, the world don't owe you. You owe the world. That's he, what he would tell me. Why do you think he had differences? Uh, Steve Harvey had differences with him. Steve had differences with him when they went on. Steve the was scared of him. Comedian Faison Love recently did an interview detailing for the first time how he and the late actor Bernie Mac started on a wrong footing but eventually ended up becoming buddy. Faison also explained why Steve Harvey ended up hating Mac, and the reason is pretty obvious. Well, according to Faison, when the Kings of Comedy tour started, Harvey, who deemed himself the hottest comedian at the time, wanted to be the one closing on the shows. But after a few stops, Bernie Mac had gained so much fan base that the show's creators were left with no choice but to disrupt the lineup and allow Bernie to close the shows. Guy Tory was hosting it. Yeah. Um, Cedric, DL, Bernie, and, and Steve was supposed to close it. As you would expect, this didn't go down well with Harvey, and that's how their beef began. They dropped Guy, and Steve was the host. And guess who closed up? Bernie. Mm. Harvey is just about everywhere these days. Via his weekday, nationally syndicated morning radio show, his wildly popular best-selling book, Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man, and his gig as the new host of Family Feud, the stand-up comedian is definitely one of the hardest working folks in show business. But reportedly, his personality is pretty much rotten to the core. Harvey's success, though, isn't exempt from backlash. The blogosphere is full of comments by many who refer to him as arrogant and full of himself. To others, though, he's just a talented, charismatic comedian who is expanding his brand. While Harvey is clearly enjoying his success, one thing has always nagged both fans and non-fans alike, his relationship with the late Bernie Mac. Harvey and Bernie Mac made up one half of 2000's The Original Kings of Comedy, a highly successful stand-up comedy tour and film, with comedians D.L. Hewley and Cedric the Entertainer rounding out the foursome. While the tour made history and helped all four comedians' careers rise to even newer heights, the relationship between Mac and Harvey seemingly took center stage, dogged by persistent rumors that the two men weren't actually on friendly terms. While those rumors died down, they resurfaced again when Mac passed away in 2008. On Conversations with Ed Gordon, which premiered on BET some years back, Gordon interviewed Harvey and addressed the alleged feud between the two, with Harvey finally publicly addressing it from his standpoint. According to the interview, the feud stemmed from a 2003 GQ interview with Mac, in which he suggests Harvey was not only envious of his success, but also tried to steal gigs from him. Harvey acknowledged his feelings about the GQ article and admitted his anger about it. I was upset at first because it just wasn't true, said Harvey. Me and Bernie had a lot of good times together, and then this article in GQ came out and put all this vicious stuff in there. Harvey also acknowledged that he spoke with Mac about the interview. B said he never said it. I had to take him at his word for it. After Mac's passing, Harvey revealed that his widow, Rhonda McCullough, helped him get beyond the feud. Rhonda, of all people, knows the truth. It was a cleansing moment for me because I was able to let go of a lot of stuff. Who knows what was actually behind the beef? However, Harvey's admission of having a cleansing moment might imply that something was there indeed. Whatever it was, we'll probably never know. Just recently, one of the members of the original Kings of Comedy, Cedric the Entertainer, appeared to confirm Harvey had issues with Mac. Cedric, who was a part of the tour along with D.L. Hewley, Steve Harvey, and Bernie Mac, confirmed that the two comedians did not see eye to eye. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, they were the kind of guys that, they are both alpha males, you know, like they both, they just saw it differently, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, they were able to get through it, he said, while on Shannon Sharp's podcast club, Shay Shay. Is it true that Steve and, and, and Bernie butted heads? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, they were the kind of guys that they both alpha so, males, you know, like they, they both, you know, they just saw it different. You know right. what I'm saying? But at the end of the day... They Cedric added that because of the feud, it had prevented them from doing another tour. I think, of course, that was, you know, definitely a contributing circumstance. But I also think that it had a lot to do with the promoter on the thing because he got a bigger head than all of us. The dude that put us all together started to really think was about him. So it started to be that. So it was a lot of those kinds of elements. Cedric is not the only person who has confirmed this story. Ed Lover seems to have confirmed Cat Williams' claims about Steve Harvey and his difficulties with Bernie Mac. The legendary DJ dropped a new episode of his Seaman Son, 
podcast on January 5th this year, where he backed up Kat's story that the comedian shared on the latest episode of the Club Shay Shay podcast. He goes on to say that he was supposed to be one of the kings of comedy, that they approached him after Bernie passed, he said in the episode, but he didn't want to go on the kings of comedy tour because of Steve Harvey's treatment of Bernie Mac. He has a lot of respect for Bernie Mac. After explaining that he'd been a friend of Bernie Mac's until the day he died, Ed Lover continued, The stuff that Cat Williams said about Steve Harvey calling to try to get Bernie's role on Ocean's Eleven, and that kind of stuff, Bernie told me out of his own mouth. I believe Bernie Mac when he said Steve Harvey hated on him, he concluded. Cat certainly shook the table with his appearance on Club Shay Shay earlier this year, but he saved most of his vitriol for Steve Harvey. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had, he said in the interview. Now Steve got a sitcom where he is the principal and he wears a suit, and then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business, and it's a man unit, he continued. Then you ask him, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. This is the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asked for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good and looks like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none, you have to have range," Cat slammed Harvey. And in the same breath, it also appears Cat has enjoyed his fair share of industry beef with Faison. In a reposted Vlad TV segment from 2019, Faison recalls how Cat once pulled a gun on him. Cat and Faison were beefing over money Cat reportedly owed him. However, Faison revealed that things went to a dark place when he tried to collect. You and uh, Cat Williams got into it back in the day, back oh. in, I guess, 2012. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Furthermore, he recalled Cat urging Suge Knight to take him out. Obviously, things did not go further than that, but it's still an incident that has stuck with the burbly comedian and actor. The clip was reposted amid Faison's comments on Cat's recent Club Shay Shay interview. It's hard to address lunacy, hypocrisy, and downright ignorance, but it's so funny how many people think this dumb MF is spitting truth. But that's the internet, I guess. You guys want to believe in something so bad. Listen to what he's saying. He's actually calling for help. He's calling for help. None of the S he says lines up with nothing, Faison said. Kat's remarks during his conversation with Shannon Sharp on the Club Shay Shay podcast have since caused an enormous uproar among his peers on social media. But as Kevin Hart and other comedians step forward to speak out against Kat's comments about them, a video clip of Faison admitting to finding The Pimp Chronicles star overrated is getting a lot of attention. The Art of Dialogue's YouTube page shared the four-minute clip following Kat's explosive sit-down. The full interview was originally posted on their platform in February 2023. When it comes to comedians, right, who would you say is the most overrated comedian of all time? Cat Williams. When asked to elaborate on his answer as to why he finds Cat overrated, Faison Love said that the firecracker comedian was all mouth and no product. Aside from his comedy shows, Faison argued that Cat lacked the resume to be considered one of the greatest comedians. While some comedians have diversified into TV and film, Faison couldn't remember a movie that had cast Cat in the last two decades. Where is he great at? He questioned the interviewer. Greatness is consistent. If Kat's success rests on the achievements from over 20 years ago, Faison states he would view that person as a one-trick pony. Additionally, the 55-year-old disagreed with the subsequent question regarding Kat's career taking its direction due to his personal issues. He mentioned several comedians like Richard Pryor, who in 1980 during an S attempt while freebasing coke, set himself on fire. Yet, instead of dwelling on his past mistakes, Pryor did what most comedians do, turning his turmoil into comedy. So clearly Steve Harvey appears to have a handful of people who do not like him in Hollywood. As for his issues with the late Bernice Mac, maybe we will never get to know the whole truth, but the little we know now is that the two definitely did not see eye to eye. Whatever the reason, let's hope it's in the past now. And that's it from us today until next time. Thank you for watching.